Here at Turpentine Creek, our goal is to provide a lifetime refuge for abused and neglected big cats, with an emphasis on tigers, lions, leopards, and cougars. Through public education, we work to end the exotic animal trade, making sanctuaries like Turpentine Creek no longer necessary. Together, we can preserve and protect these magnificent predators in the wild for our children's future. Turpentine Creek is a United States Department of Agriculture licensed facility for exotic and native wildlife, accredited by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, a founding member of the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance, and the American Association of Zookeepers. We rescue survivors of the exotic animal trade, providing them a safe, lifelong home with exceptional diets and proper care. While working to preserve endangered species in the wild, through public education and advocacy. To date, hundreds of big cats have been rescued by Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge from across the country. Our reputation for diligent care and compassion for animals, along with the staggering number of exotic animals being kept as pets in American homes, has meant that a place at the refuge is constantly in high demand. We believe that cats are predators not pets or entertainment for the masses. They and other exotic and native wildlife deserve to live out their lives with dignity and should be allowed to be the wild animals they instinctually are. We will continue to be their voice, both for those forced to live in captivity and those struggling for survival in the wild. My name is Becky. I'm a wildlife interpreter at Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge here in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. So what we do at Turpentine Creek is we rescue big cats and bears and other animals that people have tried to have as pets and from fake zoos and fake sanctuaries. What I mean by fake zoo, we're going to kind of talk about that throughout the virtual tour here in a minute. Um, but a fake zoo is a place that lets you interact with these animals. You guys, we have rescued animals from all over the United States, from all kinds of different situations. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to play a, a video for you to see the animals. We don't really walk around. I don't walk around outside with the computer because we are a true sanctuary, which means we never force these animals to do anything they don't want to. They may be further out in their grassy habitat where you wouldn't really be able to see very well. So I have a video made for you. I'm going to stop it every once in a while, tell you a little bit more about each animal but I'm also gonna let it play at the same time. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the screen, grab the video and we will get started with that for you guys. So we are home to a lot of different animal species at Turpentine. One of those is Flip or Kawada Mundi. So Kawada Mundi is actually related to a raccoon. They're actually found in South Central America and down into Southern parts of Arizona. The orange car that she is by is actually a birthday present for her for her 16th birthday. We do go all out for their birthdays and their holidays. So we create all kinds of toys. I'll tell you why we give them toys. But she does love her eggs. That's actually what she's eating there is she's cracking down and eating on some eggs. We did recently lose Flip. Quality of life is very important. So knowing how to properly care for the animal and then as they age, if they start having health issues, um, our vet does look at that. And so we did recently just lose flip but she came from a fake zoo in Branson Missouri that allowed interaction with their predators I'll tell you about at the very end of the tour but we also do have mostly big cats of turpentine so this is Fergie so Fergie is not a lion and Fergie is not a tiger Fergie is actually a liger so a liger is a lion dad and a tiger mom that's not gonna happen in the wild you guys these fake zoos do this to make money Unfortunately, you guys, everything goes back to money on what these people do to these animals. You are the future for the animals around the world to make sure that they stay wild and they stay safe. The adults in your life have the role to make the change for them today, but kids, you guys learning at the age you are what's right and wrong, treating animals is very important to help save them for that future. Um, Fergie there, as you'll see, has that lion color. She has a few faint tiger stripes. I will tell you a little bit more about those ligers a little bit further down the tour. But you are going to hear some sad stories, but you're going to hear fun things as well. So, for example, this is Mari running toward the camera. She does live in here with Mr. Chief. If you like Disney's Lion King, 
Think about Scar and think about Mufasa because the darker the mane with Scar, he would have been the king in the real world, not Mufasa. That dark mane makes the king of the pride. Um, so when you visit Turpentine, we do have a lot of lions that you will see. Uh, we have both boy and girl lions, multiple lions here at Turpentine, and it does get pretty noisy when they start talking to each other. We also have small African cats. So you'll have our lions that you'll see, but then you'll also see our African servals, which is the cat you're gonna see on the screen next. This cat is actually a full grown cat. They're a little bit bigger than a house cat, but you guys, they can jump up to 10 feet straight in the air to catch a bird. So that is like you jumping from your floor up to your ceiling to, get, to touch that ceiling. Without any help, that'd be pretty hard. But these cats do that to catch those birds mid-flight. Also, these cats' ears, if you notice, they have massive ears. They, if you wanted to hear like these cats, you would have to have ears the size of dinner plates. They hunt better than lions and tigers. They catch about 50% of their prey, whereas a lion and a tiger might catch 20%. So what I mean by that is if I give you 10 pizzas and I tell you to eat five of those pizzas, you ate half of them. If a servo like Sammy on the screen here tries to catch 10 birds, kids, he's going to catch five. But if a tiger tries to catch 10 birds, they may only catch two. So never let the size of the cat fool you. But every serval that calls Turpentine Creek home was a house pet at some point in their life. Um, these cats also will hit a fish so hard when they're hunting it, they will knock it out. So even though they might be small, don't let that fool you. They are a mighty little predator. So Africa is home to lots of small cats, but obviously they're home to the big cats being the lions. So this is Daniel and Chloe. They are together since they came with each other. If you ever visit Turpentine, you may see some cats with another big cat and some not. If they knew each other, you guys, we keep them together. We just watch how they do. But if they were not living with another big cat, we never introduce them because you risk them fighting and we don't want that to happen. Daniel and Chloe came from a fake zoo in Colorado. This fake zoo had 115 animals, you guys, living in very small spaces. They couldn't really run around. They were walking around on wire, on nails, and broken metal. Uh, Mr. Daniel there, his eye, you'll notice he has just one eye. He's rubbing his face in the Christmas tree. Um, his eye was really infected when we got there. They didn't really ever take care of him. So imagine getting poked in the eye with something and it getting infected and you never go to the doctor. So Daniel gets along totally fine with that one eye though. His neighbor is Savo. This is Mr. Savo here, who's also from Branson, Missouri. He is our most talkative lion that we have at Turpentine. So I told you earlier, whenever they talk, you can hear them a good distance away. You can hear them up to five miles away. So imagine going outside and standing on your front porch and trying to talk to your friend who may live across the town. They wouldn't be able to hear you without the phone, but the lions do it very easily. They communicate with each other so that they know in the wild if there is food that they have caught, if there is danger. Um, so this is their communication. Our lions talk with each other too. And Savannah here, her favorite toy is a stick. You give her a pile of sticks and she's a very happy cat. She also likes to watch her neighbor, as you see, she's just staring at him through the fence line. But Savannah came with Chief and Mari, the two lines you saw at the very beginning, plus some other cats. If you have heard about Tiger King, you guys, the cats were owned by a man who was on the Tiger King show. He is just one of the monsters out there that hurt these animals. Um, so this is the first time any of the cats that came from Indiana who were on that show ever touched grass in their life. They were living on concrete and rock, you guys. So it's not a very good situation for them at those places. But then you have Mama and Bosco. So Mama is a solid white tiger rolling around there. Bosco has the stripes that lives in there with her. So here's where I tell you a little bit more about a fake zoo. You guys, it's really important to learn about a place before you visit a place. So you learn every day for school. Um, you are going to learn every day for the rest of your life. The saying, I learned something new today is very real. And I pause it there so you can see his paw pretty well. You guys, Mama and Bosco came from that fake zoo in Colorado. And they let people play with their babies. So if you go to a place and they have a baby tiger or a baby lion or whatever baby animal it may be, and they let you play with them, not really a good thing. 
imagine having a baby sister or brother. They're about a month old. They can't crawl. They can't hold a bottle. They can't do anything for themselves. And you go into, let's say, a Target or any other big store. And you pass them around every day, all day long, to every single person in that store. They're going to get hurt. They're going to get sick. Well, it's the same thing at these fake places. Some of Mama and Bosco's babies that they had there at that fake zoo in Colorado could not walk, you guys. When we rescued them, they were really hurt. They're able to run and play now. But they should have never went through that so people could play with them and take pictures. So it's important to learn about a place and know what they, how they treat their animals. Glacier here, he cracks me up because when he first arrived, he tried to pee on my coworker on one of her tours. So you guys, these cats will try to pee on you and they can reach you up to 10 feet away. So sometimes you visit Turpentine, you may get a little extra souvenir to take home. They don't all do that, but some of them try. Ungawa the lion lives with Glacier the tiger you just saw. As I said, lions and tigers are not going to be found together in the wild. There are some lions in Asia where the tigers live, but they don't live in the same area with each other. So it is all because of people wanting to make money off of them. It gets really confusing, you guys, because there's ligers and tie ligers, and it just goes on. The dad has the first letters of the name. A liger is a dead lion and a mom tiger, but a, a tigon is the opposite. It is a dead tiger and a mom lion. Um, but Ungawa and Glacier there came from the Indiana facility as well. Um, and Ungawa is my new favorite female lion. Um, because she looks like she's grumpy all of the time in the face. She just has a classic grumpy look to her. Tigers love their water. Lions are not the biggest fans of swimming pools. So this summer, I had hoped to see Ungawa actually play in a swimming pool since she lived with Glacier. Uh, but she didn't. She decided to stay away from the swimming pool while he was having fun splashing around. So this is Luna and Remington's habitat. So they live next door to Glacier and Ungawa. Miss Luna there is getting her toy out of her uh, little tree bush that she has there. Remington's doing what we call the stinky face. So if you have a cat at home, your cat will do the same thing. Basically, it's like they have a second nose in the roof of their mouth. Um, so they open up that mouth and let air flow over it to see what they're smelling, if they like it or not. We call it the stinky face, you guys. That's not what it's technically called. That's just what we call it. Um, but the toy that Luna was playing with. So we give them all kinds of toys to keep their mind and their body active. And this part really cracks me up because Remington wants the toy. But watch what Luna does. She comes back and tries to get it back from him. She gives him a little nibble at his tail. And then he walks away. But toys are giving to them because imagine sitting at home on your couch, staring at the wall and never doing anything for the rest of your life. That would not be good for your mind and that wouldn't be good for your body. It's all kinds of toys like the cardboard box you see here with Karma. Cats love cardboard. It doesn't matter if it's an eight pound house cat, a 600 pound tiger or a bear, they love their cardboard. And if you like popsicles, that's her popsicle she was licking on there. However, it is not a popsicle that you would want. That is a meat sickle, but we also give them what we call a blood sickle. So they're carnivores, right? They eat just meat. That is all they eat. We do get local cattle farmer. If a cow has passed away, you guys, naturally, they will donate the cow to us and we'll feed that out. These cats eat a lot of meat. If you know anyone in your family or anyone at all that works with Tyson Foods, like Tyson chicken nuggets, they help us a lot. They give us, it's a huge number, but they give us over 300,000 pounds of meat a year free to feed the cats. So they help us a lot. So eating your Tyson chicken nuggets helps the turpentine crate too. Um, but this is Miss Keisha here. So Keisha likes to hide in her leaf pile. Even though she is a tiger in the Ozarks, they can hide pretty well. And they do like the snow, as you see. The, cat, the tigers love the colder weather. Lions, not so much. They usually hang out in the nice heated dens. But with those toys, these are toys for them too. Leaf piles, pumpkins, watermelons, kitchen spices like you have at home, like, like basil, anything like that, your moms and dads, anybody you know that may cook with that. 
these cats like it too. They smell it. They love the smell of it. Also perfume and cologne. So the smelly good stuff, we will spray that on there on their toys and their habitat. They'll roll around. They'll mark their territory. All kinds of fun things for these cats. Now Tigger here doesn't look like a normal tiger and that's because he's not. He is not a cat that you're going to actually find in the wild. If you notice, there are no black stripes on him. That is because he is created to be this color, again, to make money. They're supposed to be orange and black like Floyd here you see hanging out by that boomer ball. You guys, their black stripes make them look smaller to their prey. Their orange color hides them in the bamboo and the grasses that grow in Asia naturally. But also, you guys, the main food for a tiger in the wild are deer. And the deer that they eat cannot see green. So their food is colorblind to the color of green. So a green jungle to their food looks orange. But with Tigger, he is too light in color. And he has no black stripes to make him look smaller. Except for those few you see on the tip of his tail and the inside of his leg. So again, he's created by people to make money. And as I told you, tigers love their swimming pool. So Mr. Poncho here is hanging out in his swimming pool in the summer. Um, we do put those big stock tanks in there for them in the summertime, but we are working on getting big in ground swimming pools for the cats too. They will take their toys to the swimming pool. They will take their meat sickles sometimes. That's what he's got um, to the swimming pool. This is Montana and Poncho's habitat. They are brothers from Colorado. And just look at the size of those paws and the size of those teeth. This is why they are predators, not pets. You guys, a tiger, when they hunt their prey, like most cats, but a tiger will actually hold on to the neck of their prey. As you see, he's drowning his toy there. They will hold on to that until they feel the pulse of that heartbeat stop in their prey. So they have a special nerve in their teeth that helps them to feel that. They are not meant to be a house pet. They are not meant to be played with at all. This is Donner. He lives in here with Roman, who is my favorite tiger at Turpentine. Donner and Roman are both also from that big fake zoo at Colorado. If you notice, Donner is a white tiger. Roman will be too. So I said earlier, tigers are supposed to be orange and black. You guys, a white tiger is not a snow tiger. They're not an Arctic tiger. They're not an albino tiger. They are bred for that color to be white to make money. If you notice, Roman's eyes didn't look quite right. That's because that they can end up with a lot of issues. But think about a white tiger trying to hide in a green jungle. So a white tiger trying to hide from prey, prey is going to see them, trying to hide from predators, predators are going to see them. To a tiger, another predator is another tiger. Um, and then obviously when the tigers are little, there's other things that can be predators to them as well. But as an adult, it is another tiger and people, unfortunately. People do a lot of harm to hurt these animals in the wild. So we have to be their voice, you guys, for the tigers living in the wild and also the tigers that are going through the abuse in the U.S. and backyards. We have to be the voice because Think about a, an animal. They cannot pick up the phone and call 911. We have to be that voice for them. This is Hurricane and Avalanche. Um, they are from the Indiana facility where the man that was on Tiger King, he was one of the people that was on there. These two brothers are a little bit older. They now live at our retirement area. So we have a retirement area, you guys, for these animals. It's here on property as well. It's called Rescue Ridge. So when they first got here, you'll see they're on the hillsides in this habitat. But we just recently moved them down to our flat ground. Being in the Ozarks, as you know, there's a lot of hills. So as the animals get older, that can get a little harder on them to walk. So we do move them down to the flat ground. So Hurricane and Avalanche here do live now at our Rescue Ridge area, where we do have about 20 animals. And then this is down in that location. This is Snowball the Goofball. So I call Snowball the Goofball for a few reasons. One reason is whenever he sees the food truck getting closer, um, he will actually start bouncing back and forth and get very vocal. It is like he is dancing for dinner, which is a lot of fun to watch. 
He also has a very special toy in his platform in his habitat that actually hangs just above his platform. Um, he is master destroyer of all toys. So we actually took this giant toy and we took poles and we welded it all up and the toy's hanging on a chain. When I say master destroyer, you guys, he would destroy all of his toys very quickly. Um, so we wanted to make him work harder and think harder at destroying his toy. And he did succeed at getting that toy off of the chain as well. He also loves bubble baths. Um, so we will put kids bubble baths in their swimming pools in the summertime another enrichment for them he's figured out if he puts smaller toys in there pushes them around he will make more bubbles um he is actually one of the cubs that we rescued from mama and bosco that solid white tiger and the tiger with the stripes that you saw earlier this is one of their cubs that we rescued from the colorado rescue i do want to go ahead and show you this um so i know it's a little harder to see up against my hand but this is the size of a tiger's canine you guys they have a three inch tooth. This is why we say predators, not pets here at Turpentine. This is also not real. These are plastic, but actual size, but this is the size of a lion tiger claw. So if you have a cat at home and your cat ever scratches you, think about how bad that hurts. Then think about a tiger that weighs 600 pounds um, or a lion that's a little over 400 pounds. They are beautiful, but they're most definitely deadly. So guys, the reason I say it's really important to know about a place before you visit a place, we read, did a rescue out of Branson, Missouri. There was a fake zoo that told about a 16 year old volunteer that he could go inside a habitat with three tigers. Their names are Chuff, Abigail, and Athena. They now live here, but whenever he went into that fake facility, he went into their habitat he tripped, he fell, and they attacked him. He is alive, you guys, but he is paralyzed and he cannot walk. So even though they're hand raised by a person, that doesn't mean that they're safe. They still are a wild animal. And when they are hand raised, you guys, they don't know how to fully survive because an animal is taught by their mom how to fully survive. Obviously how to hunt, how to hide, all of that is taught. But when they're raised by a person, they don't get that kind of give you a real world story with that as a man here in Arkansas back in 2005 had a pet tiger he no longer wanted so he drove her to the Buffalo National River and he let her out in the woods where people are hiking and camping she smelled her way back to him over 60 miles away a very long distance away because that is where the food came from it's a big word but it's called habituated basically they're hand raised they don't know how to fully survive and you guys, these animals, there are more tigers living in someone's backyard in the United States than there are in the wild. There are less than 4,000 tigers living in the wild, you guys. There are about seven to 10,000 in someone's backyard in a fake zoo in the United States. So this is why I say you are the future for these animals. But you guys, we did just work with the, the government to rescue cats from the Tiger King Park Zoo. Those animals were taken from there. So if you watch that show, as I said, he is just one of the many monsters out there that hurt the animals. So think about what you watch, think about what you like. If you're on any social media or anything like that, think about what you're liking, think about what you're watching, think about where you're going no matter how old you are, you can be their voice. All right. But I hope you guys can come down and visit us. We're open every day, except for Christmas day. We do get a lot of visitors from the Kansas city area. Um, so you can come out and you can see these animals in person. And that's definitely very different on the video. But again, if you have any questions for me, feel free to email them. Um, again, education at tcwr.org. That's education at Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge. So T as in tiger, C as in cat, W as in wild, R as in rabbit, .org. So again, just thank you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. If you'd like more information, please visit turpentinecreek.org or stop by in person.